Yo what's up guys this is Happy No with another Guild Wars 2 PvP video and on this video I'm gonna show you the Revenant, Power Revenant of course and yeah. Before I start talking about the Revenant and the gameplay I just wanted to say thank you for over 1.2k million views on my channel. This is awesome again within such a short time uh, 200k more views on my channel this is really awesome and thanks all who watch my videos and also I wanted to say Thank you for over 3.6k subscribers on my channel, this is really awesome and yeah feel free to subscribe to my channel, I never say that but <laughs> just you can do that because you are so great all who subscribe to my channel, I love this community. And yeah, there are a lot of new news and basically I just thought I would check out my latest videos and I just saw that I haven't played Revenant for a while now and I just go ahead and show you the Revenant. And I know most people just watch the Revenant with double sword currently, but I still recommend to use shield due to the survivability factor. And yeah. On this video I will show you not the normal one that I will play with the Berserker amulet, but with a Moradeur's one. Just because the people who want to try it out should start with Moradeur's amulet, because Berserker requires a lot more skill. Because you lose like... Uh, how much HP you lose? You will have 16k HP, you lose a lot of HP and you are really squishy if you have so only 16k HP. And yeah, a lot of news, I even heard that an, uh, some other pro gamers got also banned from PvP seasons. Which is like a really fun because yeah, th it's like those pro players who have s the PvP titles getting banned because they do shit. And I know they watch my videos, so it is always fun to laugh about you guys. And uh, yeah, what else can I say? I have a 700 DK. And yeah, I guess I'm somewhere between nothing and nothing. <laughs> I haven't played now in a while. And to be honest, I also haven't played that much Revenant, as you all know. And uh, I, I, I did more Sporting Dagger only, just to see if I can hold a high rating with core core uh, gameplay which I did and I'm also on my second account I'm about to go ahead and rank up my second account without expansions onto at least platinum 3 I guess because uh, that's what I want at least I don't know if I make it into top 10 with my second account because he's like really low currently and he ha it had also um, 700 DK I just got with my second account I don't know from the 15 games I won 12 or something like that and I was placed uh, platinum 1 I guess I, I, yeah, I was placed something platinum 1 or even gold I'm not so sure I forgot the rating but I, w I got placed really low because on my second account I haven't played last season and before that season I DK'd 700 and the other season before I also just played uh, 20 games or 40 games and yet yeah, this DK just killed me <laughs> I would like to only do the 10 placements and don't play at all but you just get this DK and it just yeah ruins the game a little bit uh, this Q just seems to take like freaking for forever so I just gonna go ahead and show you my skins before the game starts because most people just want to know it and uh, the set that I'm using is the Bounty Hunter set, which you can get from the PvP reward track here. Desert Armor Box. For each box you open, you will get one. You can choose between one of the skins from either heavy armor, light or medium, and from different sets like Bounty Hunter or what's the other name? Bounty Hunter Elonian set and uh, War Beast set from those three I guess and so I just decided to go ahead with a full set of Bounty Hunter and the dice are Shadow Abyss plus Celestial and the weapons are Holosmith Sword, uh, Crus uh, Obsidian Shield plus the Chaos Staff skin which matches so good black and white looks really awesome and now for the Revenant uh, the Revenant got no buffs or no nerfs the DPS one 
So what only has changed is from devastation from the February update or patch. I'm not so sure if it's really true, but somewhere between that time. Uh, the change is brutality. This is the new trait, or better said, now old trait because it is not that new. And the brutality trait is really cool if you know how to use it properly. And I guess it is a good potential, uh, good skill to just cleave enemies, which you can do really good. Of course, on the current meta, it's a little bit hard. And yeah, what is the revenant? Of course, for those people who don't know it. <laughs> The Revenant is the profession who just um, is some kind of a roamer with high survivability against normal DPS but lacks on condition cleanse. So it is somewhere between a thief and a warrior but only with a lack of uh, skills to remove uh, conditions. <laughs> against DPS players it is really strong because you can just avoid getting hit with shield block, sword 3 block. Uh, staff 3 block, staff 5 block, um, in knockback, st stun break or blind, then you can stun break and blind, uh, stun break and dodge again with assassin stance and so on and so on. So you have a lot of utilities to win battles against normal DPS professions. Now the problem that you have is uh, against multiple enemies, if you play with Berserker Amulet, you have it hard because you have so so low HP and you can see it here the enemy team has really strong comp I don't know how strong they are individually but they have from everything something so the thief will chase me and the Condi players can be a real threat to me and of course if the holo smith is strong he could also be a problem but not that such a high problem because we also deal heavy damage to him so at the beginning I always show you how I play it and how you should also do it by activating those four facets plus the faces of nature you will get for your entire team those four boons and you can stack a lot of them and now you can see it here when it goes under 10% under 5% you can just do this swap to your assassin stance and you can see it here all those boons are granted up to 30 seconds for your allied friends and yeah let's see they have a condition I don't know I don't want to one we want this guy but it is also dangerous to yeah go ahead to this guy we do this sword three where's this guy why are my skills bugging we do this and we immediately got this guy down we blind him there uh that was a nice combo from us we tried to revive him and we were able to and now we can get the quickness attacks auto attack this guy do this now we can auto attack him here and you can see this the burst potential is pretty high we stun break out of this we can now run far we get quickness we can lay down this skill to stop an enemy if he tries to come to our close uh, to his close point here and that's basically it you saw uh, the enemy scourge was not that strong but you saw how, how the burst potential just works with this build now what i always like to do is keep face of elements and face of strengths up because both of them grant you boons and they don't drain your life force here okay this is nice we can now fight this guy i just tag him we do this he activated his traps so we can just block here he will try to pull me into his trap we wait for that we stun break out of this and now we can see, you can see this what i'm doing I weapon swap with quickness and then we can just burst down the sky really fast and it works pretty nice when you weapon swap and burst down enemies. Uh, impossible odds can be used for the super speed so you will get, okay this is dangerous. The mesmer can take that against this guy. So we grant ourselves some, what is this guy doing? We can do this, we just blind him and then we burst him down. We remove some conditions we need to block here we just auto attack now i need to dodge this is dangerous if this guy gets me with a burst that's what i'm doing i'm keeping my healing skill up if probably this guy tries to burst me down that i will be safe from that and you can see this here 
I'm keeping it only up like this, so I will get boons, my life force will get drained. And now I need to get into the combat by attacking this guy, or one of them. And then I can weapon swap here, and then we just quickly, again with quickness, try to burst down this guy. We activate now F2 to get the boons. We wait until this guy tries to spear me, activate this, oh boy, oh boy. No, I just failed it. <laughs> I failed my combo with the Mesmer, just stupid uh, confusion on me. This guy is not dealing any damage, <laughs> why? He needs to finish off this guy fast. No, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Mm. My Spellbreaker did not so good. And I don't know, did I had my healing skill up? I guess I had my healing skill up, but I just swapped too late. <laughs> Oh my god, what is going on? <laughs> I really need to start playing now. I'm just gonna go far. Oh man, how did this happen? I don't know, my fault was that I yeah, swapped too late to my dragon stance. But now the point is, I have... Okay, I can get the decap here, it looks like. I'm not so sure if I will get it like that, but... We just block. So he don't get revealed. We do this. We block his attack. And then we can just go ahead. Attack this guy. Dodge there. We dodge this attack. We sword 3 him. And you can see this. We have him down. This is now dangerous. What is this guy doing? He seems to just FK. We can remove two conditions. Now we just block. Try to plant this guy. Use the healing skill. Blind him there. Auto attack. Sword 3 him. And this guy is just bad. <laughs> this guy is just bad. We block. And he's done. Okay. I don't I don't know, this guy maybe just don't want to play or something like that, or he's just first time playing Scourge. Because what he's doing is like just FKing or something like that. Come on, do I have a target? You see, it is important to always tag a player because what this guy is already here. Okay, the Mesmer is also here. We blind the Mesmer. I need to be careful now. We use the healing skill. Sword 3 this guy not. Oh boy, oh boy. And I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. We need to use the healing skill. No. <laughs> Damn it. I was not able to get the Mesmer in time. Um, I don't know what should I say. My team is also not the best. But at least the enemy team, what the enemy team is doing good is they are capping and decapping points and my team is just yeah willingly not trying to win <laughs> uh, yeah I don't know I also want in my videos you know I, I also want to just always show you what you can do when you do this uh, the scourge not even watching me this is okay he laid down his marks all on one point this is also bad if you play Scourge or Necro or anything like that, don't lay your marks on one point because people have dodges and it is really obvious that you see them. So I recommend always to lay down, let's say, a mark here on this point, one here, one there, and one maybe there where the enemies going to come from. So what I'm doing here is I just wait for him to lay down a mark. He's not using his marks, I don't know why. We blind that. we just let him get all his conditions onto us and now we just need to be patient oh boy oh boy we need to block and blind we ain't able to block and blind this guy this is bad sword three him sword three him we blind him and then we just try to get some damage going onto this guy we block now 
my hollow smith my hollow smith friend is not doing any damage <laughs> this is bad <laughs> we activate quickness and now we just try to burst what my face traversal just bucked awesome <laughs> awesome we just do this try to cleave this guy and also destroy this mesmer this is pretty nice and now we can just go ahead and try to decap a point <laughs> but the game seems already over we can now face traversal and this is dangerous if he hits me yes he already hit me we just wait he attacks me and we can now just activate the healing skill and just wait for him okay he used his shield and now we can just go ahead and try to knock him down now after he dodges he's not dodging so he's dead okay we need now to attack this guy so the mesmer won't be able to heal him up the mesmer is healing him come on healing skill healing skill and the, uh, the mesmer is just interrupting me or what the hell is going on we do this where's the mesmer he's here we try to remove a boon we do this and he's done okay i know it's not my best revenant gameplay but yeah Whew, I had I have for sure top stat kills, I know that. <laughs> Otherwise I will be sad. Holy shit. <laughs> this is a little bit more than I expected, but it looks good. Uh this guy just got revives. I got also revives. Defense. He got defense also. This is nice. Hmm. Um yeah. I guess both teams were not the best. I don't have to complain that much. <laughs> Um, the gameplay was, I guess, okay. I could have done even better, but uh, sometimes I just try to talk a, a little bit about the entire gameplay and what you should do and what you can do in some situations. But you see it is hard to maintain, always uh, focused and always to try to give the best. And of course, if your profession don't matches the enemy team, it is also not good. As you just saw, I had a 1v1 against the Scourge more than once against the mesmer and both of them counter me and so if i would have got into that position normally i would have not done that if the enemy scourge would have been strong i would have not won we want him because it makes no sense he just would kill me without a problem uh, but the enemies were not that strong so let's talk about the skills now and what you can do first the build of course as always Sigil of Volubility and Sigil of Exploitation just to maintain the high damage output. You can also go with Sigil of, um, what's the one with the Might? Battle? No, Courage, yes. To get more Might stacks, but you don't really need that. Of course, if you get your uh, Might stacks every two seconds, you also get them for your allied friends, which is also pretty nice, but you don't really necessarily need that. Sigil of Exploitation with Sigil of Vulnerability works pretty nice because on your build you will stack Vulnerability plus with that you stack even more and your auto attack of course stacks also Vulnerability which is pretty nice and you can stack at least 10 stacks of Vulnerability within a short time which means you and your allied friends will have a 10% additional damage bonus onto the target with the Vulnerability which is pretty nice so you can you can guess it like this you will always have at least the 10 stacks of vulnerability plus the 5% damage bonus for enemies under 50% HP which makes it pretty strong uh, additional 50% higher damage output onto that target then we have sigil of doom and sigil of annulment the sigil of annulment is there to remove two boons in combination with the weapon swap we remove stability plus two other boons, which could be um, protection or Aegis or something like that, I don't really know, which is pretty nice. And Sigil of Doom is in combination with this, so the enemy will be not able to, uh, how to say it, not be able to get knocked back and stuff like that. But if he get hit, he you remove at least three boons, plus you apply Doom, uh, Poison, so the enemy has less healing when he uses his healing skill and you're not able to interrupt that which makes it pretty nice 
Sigil of Doom can also be changed for um, uh, what's the name? Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da, condition removal, cleansing, yes, or energy if you want to have more dodges, more survivability. But otherwise, you can play it like this. Now, as I just mentioned on the video, I showed you now with Marauder. But I, if you are more advanced player, you can go with Berserker. You will have 16k HP, but you will have a much higher damage output and be more deadlier. But of course, it depends really on you and on your team. If your allied team, for example, has a good supporter and he will heal you while you deal damage, you will have no problem. If you have no one on your team who will heal you or support you, you will have a lot of problem, problems and a lot of trouble keeping yourself alive even through you have so many survivability skills. A uh, rune of leadership can be swapped for the rune of strength but it's recommended to use this one because you will get the higher boon duration plus you will have an additional two boons into con uh, two conditions into boons convert for you and nearby allied if you use your elite skill and yeah the longer boon duration is especially nice because of the brutality trait when you w when you swap you will have the longer quickness duration if you don't have this rune let's go with the strength one you will see it here uh, if you don't use it you will have only let's say three and a half seconds I know it says only four and a half but it should be a little bit more because you will get the 45 percent longer boon duration plus if you activate it face of nature you will see it here you will have five and a half seconds five and a half seconds of quickness is like really a lot a long duration and you will just be able to burst down enemies pretty strong with that so that said let's just go ahead and talk about the build devastation invocation and herald basically the same build as always and then we go with vicious lacerations the damage bonus when you attack with your sword up to five times which means 10 percent damage bonus additional Assassin's Presence increase the ferocity of nearby allies, which also will be granted to yourself only in combat. Or you can also go with Nefarious Momentum. If you use Legendary Assassin skills, you will get additional might stacks for you. And of course, in combination with the build for your allied friends as well. Then we have Brutality gain quickness when you swap weapons. While you have quickness, your strikes remove stability. Um, which means we will have it let's say not five and a half seconds but uh, or at least we will have four and a half seconds like this four and a half seconds which means every one second we will remove one times one time stability which is pretty nice if the enemy triggers let's say uh, last stand or what can he do uh, the lead skill from the druid if he activates that and he will get in on an interval interval of one second stability you will remove that while you have quickness for every second every time you hit which is pretty nice um, yeah this is new and this is good because you have burst combos now that like I showed it with sword 3 you can burst with quickness pretty fast when you swap you have staff 5 to deal heavy damage and to knock back enemies you will not deal that much damage but it is more than enough plus you will just knock back the enemy and interrupt him while doing that uh, the next is invocation forceful persistence damage increase uh, damage while you have an active up upkeep skill which means when you are on your herald, herald form you will have additional 7% damage increase plus for each uh, each of those phases that you have up you will have an additional 2% damage bonus but it will not be so much affecting the game because you will have to use them a lot more than you should and yeah then we go uh yeah those little bonuses you can just read them by your own because it's like fury damage increase stun break when you swap assassins and so on gain might when you grant yourself fury this is the best here to use because evoking a legend grants boons to nearby allies based on the legend it was evoked which means yeah you will either get might or when you go to your dragon stance protection I mean this could also work but the one here works a little bit better because you will get m a lot of more might plus in combination with the build gain fury when you evoke a legend every 10 seconds fury in combo with might and then we have it here fury with might and if an ally gives you fury you get also again additional might which is pretty strong 
Uh, critical hit chance has increased effectiveness when you are under the effects of fury, which you can see it here, 88% critical hit chance, which is pretty nice. And then we go with Herald, Radiant Revival. We will have the entire time 40, uh, the entire time 10% faster revive speed, plus every 45 seconds if you revive an Ellie, we will get for 2 seconds Light Infuse, which is the healing skill here. All incoming damage will be converted to healing, no matter if it's condition or normal DPS. Um, gaining increased endurance regeneration. This is also something which you should know when you have an up upkeep skill, which is always what I mention, to always have those two up. And then uh, vigorous persistence, I just talked about that. Shared empowerment, every second you will share your... Uh, when you apply a boon to an ally, also apply might to nearby allies which is pretty nice, it works also on yourself, which means every time you have one of those up, you will apply boon to allied friends, plus might one more time. <laughs> Gain increased concentration, this is just nice to have it in combination with the leadership rune, and then we have it here, increased damage per boon on you, which is 10%, uh, 2%, and mostly you will have this 2, 4, 6, 6, 8, or even 10% damage bonus, which is pretty nice. The others work, I would say, not that good because the, the cooldowns of the skills is just too long and this one here worked pretty well with the old build, enhanced bulwark with the perma stability but you don't really need that anymore. Um, so to the combos that you can use, where do I show that? On the golem, we can see it here, the golem is uh, not available. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. A lot of people out there here, this golem is not used. We just fly to this guy. If I can make it, yes. So the combos that I always like to use is with this one here, face of elements, face of strength, and face of darkness in combination with sword 3. Now the combo that is, the first thing that you should do is target the enemy. Start like this, maybe dodge an attack, sword 3, face it off strength then blind the enemy and sword 3 and then you can swap here swap you can see this the combo works pretty nice and then just auto attack block dodge use the healing skill dodge one more time auto attack here then you can go with impossible odds here sword 3 swap and repeat that you can see this the 25 stacks of uh, vulnerability are on the enemy and you will just deal heavy damage, do this, blind the enemy, swap, stun break, use the stun, and then just repeat, 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 and this is basically the main combo that you should use. And here to show it to you here one more time on the beast, I just need to wait a second. So Chieftain Utahim, you can also start with Face of Nature up, and immediately activate Face of Elements plus Face of Darkness for the quickness. So. You can start the game like this, those two, and then you can go ahead and do this, activate F2, try to dodge that attack, sword 3 this guy, blind him and then just go ahead, swap weapons and stance and just, yeah, you see this, within 3-4 uh, seconds or even 5 seconds this guy is dead. You have the quickness, you have the damage output and you can do beasts pretty fast. Revenant is one of the professions that can be used to kill the beast if your team is uh, a little bit back with the points and you just get respawned and you know near enemies are not so near you. So if until the enemy sees oh the you are doing the beast, you are already done with the beast. This is the strong thing about him. Now what you can take on 1v1s, you can take 1v1s against warriors. Of course you have to know when to use what and to avoid let's say against spellbreakers the block. But that's not that, not that hard to avoid that. Uh, you can take warriors, as you saw, guardians. Even through against guardians, you have to be careful. Try to avoid the spear. If you avoid the spear, you will have an easy game. If you can't avoid the spear, you will have a hard time. And of course, keep your stun breaks like this: face of darkness, swapping stances. Uh, if the if if the guardian hits you with longbow three after the longbow three and spear is gone you will have an easy game you can just burst enemies you can use your shield to um, block the traps as i did or you can just use the shield to block sword three or uh, longbow two the heavy hitting attacks 
on staff you can also just use warning rift to avoid hit getting caught by yeah multiple enemies if they attack you or surge of the mist not only for the damage combo but also to just survive and run away from a point and stuff like that uh, what else is to say the two condi cleanses that you have is renewing wave which you can also use near your allied friends because it's a combo finisher blast if you have an area water field you will have area healing plus you will also remove two conditions from your allied friends and heal them up a little bit which is pretty nice and a lot of people don't know that um, the elite skill can also just be uh, you can keep it here activated but you you don't have to activate it you just keep the passive up which will grant you protection and nearby allied friends as well which is pretty nice and then you can just activate it and interrupt it by interrupting it you will not really activate it but just you can uh, how to say it uh, I don't know the word for that fake the attack so the enemy dodges it but you are not using it so you will have it up again and you can reuse it after he dodged uh, this is nice when an enemy is using a healing skill and he interrupts his healing skill by with a dodge while you use that you fake it and then you can reuse it and he will be just uh, yeah knocked back <laughs> the elite skill is also pretty nice jade wins from the assassin stance I recommend to use it if you have a downed enemy and the enemies are trying to revive so if they don't have stability they will all get stunned for three seconds which is like hey hello you have now three seconds stunts and I can burst you down you will not be able to do anything uh, it stops reviving and it is really powerful especially good against druids but you have of course to remove their stability first by weapon swapping gaining quickness and remove stability and then using jade winds and then if you have them on stun you can just activate impossible odds auto attack and deal heavy damage uh, what else can I say <laughs> face reversal should normally work with the with the port to the enemy but it just bugged on the video I don't know why <laughs> I'm reposting shadows is a really nice skill to just avoid getting hit and yeah get out of combat as you can see it here you lay down a, you have a huge distance to travel when you use this skill plus you will remove uh, immobilize chill and cripple plus you gain endurance back and it's a stun break and you dodge attacks which is pretty nice uh, remove movement impairing conditions and gain fury this is also nice to know because I guess this is new it was not like this you gain fury in combination with the build additional might <laughs> and yeah you will have it e pretty easy to have at least 20 stacks of might on you which means 2.8k attack I guess and you can burst enemies pretty hardcore I recommend to you all guys even if you are an advanced players to play it first with Merodeur get into the Revenant first and then when you learn the Revenant you can just go ahead and go with um, I don't know you can even try demolitious amulet I haven't thought about this you will have also nice damage output plus the toughness which means melee players have a really really hard time against you but I still recommend either Marauder or berserker to go ahead with the build uh, what else can I say hmm yeah try always to revive any uh, your allied friends you have the 10% faster revive you can blind enemies you can interrupt them from stomping uh, against downed enemies always use face of elements face of strength to get the 20 stacks of vulnerability heavy damage combo output and then just auto attack the downed you will be the cleaver you are not that good in stomping the enemies because you don't have stability so you just have one blind here to save stomp but the enemies will interrupt you so the thing what you should do always is cleave 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 cleaving is the main source of the revenant because you are damage dealer just cleave and do nothing else <laughs> uh, while reviving you can also just keep this skill and this skill up it will give you uh, protection and you can blind enemies you can blind single attacks from enemies if they let's say a warrior with axe if you have won the enemy or if uh, holosmith uses a lead on the down you can just interrupt him with a blind and give protection to the downed ellie so he will get less damage onto him and you can revive with the 10% faster and get the safe revive and basically that was it I talked so much but I hope you learned all so 
a lot of things about the Revenant. The game was a loss, but never mind, who cares? <laughs> and that was basically it. If you have any questions or if you want to know anything else about the Revenant, just write me down in the comments. And basically that was it. Thanks again all who subscribe to my channel and now you will see as always three of my other videos which you can watch or not and also you can subscribe to my channel only if you like to if not don't do it. Thanks all for watching that was happy now I see you in my next videos bye bye guys.